money leaks, little expenses, falling through small holes, straining your budget, and draining your finances without you even realizing it. Essentially, money leaks are areas of your budget where you have small amounts of money that are falling through cracks in your budget, causing your budget to consistently be strained. Not only that, these money leaks generally are items which are not providing you with any significant advantage to spending that money. Look for these sure signs that you may have money leaks. The first one would be difficulty in sticking to a budget. Could be that you have money leaks, it's just that you are unaware of them. Small amounts of money add up to large amounts of money over time, which means that there could be consistently enough money leaks that it's causing you to feel like, I just can't stick to this budget. Another sign of a money leak is the fact that you feel just very frustrated and overwhelmed by your budget. You feel like you're doing absolutely everything that you can to stick to that budget, but it just isn't working. We're going to talk in this video about how you can find those money leaks and then most importantly, what you can do to plug them. Addressing these links and implementing some strategies in order to repair the leaks can give you a lot of stress-free time in your budget. Let's start with some examples of what a money leak even looks like. They range from the obvious. A prime example is unused subscriptions. How often do you have something coming into your home and when that renewal comes around, especially if it's not monthly, if it's once a year and you realize that your debit card has had some strange <laughs> amount of money taken out of it, you're like, what is that for? And you're like, oh shoot, it is that subscription I paid for 12 months ago. I haven't even read it. Another item could be eating out too much. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're tracking how much you're eating out and how much money you're spending when you do it and take a close look at this and see if this isn't an area of money leaks. How about some not so obvious places where you might find money leaks? Here's one you may not have thought about, brand loyalty. You've bought the same brand of toothpaste for the past 20 years and you're not changing toothpaste brands. Sometimes that brand loyalty is maybe a little misplaced and there is an, a store brand or an off brand or a generic brand of toothpaste that would work just as well for you. It's just that you're so dedicated to buying that name brand toothpaste that you haven't bothered to look at any other alternatives. Another one that's not so obvious is ignoring small fees that might mm -hmm. be attached to any internet activity that you might be doing. Look very closely at your bank statement. Look closely at your credit card statement. Any statement that you get, look for these kind of hidden fees. And when it comes to bills that are coming into your house on a regular basis, here's another kind of hidden way that it might definitely be a money leak. And that is the fact that you have normalized in your mind the amount that you are paying for that product or service. Here's a prime example, your monthly cell phone bill. And we did this yes. for years and years. I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not super excited about this monthly cell phone bill, but they're all pretty much the same. I'm I'm not even going to look to see if there's anything less expensive. That's just what a cell phone bill costs. The weird thing about this money leak is the fact that we did not even recognize it as a money leak until a friend of ours said, you know, there are less expensive alternatives. She shared with us about her cell phone service. She'd been using them for years, super happy with them, Mint Mobile. We switched to Mint Mobile and Mint Mobile, by the way, guys, is our partner for this video. $15 a month, that's what our Mint Mobile plan costs us. It gives us everything that we need. We get unlimited talk and text. They have the nation's largest 5G network and we also get high speed data. Now we got to keep our phone, we got to keep our phone number and we switched in 15 minutes flat. We did it using an eSIM card, which I think most phones nowadays have eSIM capabilities. If your phone doesn't, no worries. Our son's phones didn't either. Mint Mobile just sent them a free physical SIM card in the mail. Here's where we tell you to lean in close and listen up guys, because we have a great deal alert. Right now, new customers who purchase a Mint Mobile plan before May 31st will receive a six-month subscription to Paramount Plus on Mint at no additional cost. 
For all the details, go to our special link. It's mintmobile.com forward slash under the median. You'll also see a QR code right there on the screen right between us. You can click on that. You can also find all of the information listed all the way at the top of the description of this video. Check it out guys, because Mint Mobile is also offering any of their plans right now for $15 a month for the first three months. If you're ready to plug more of your money leaks, yes. let's go look for them, <laughs> find them and fix them. All right, number one, you're gonna track your spending patterns. What in the world does this have to do with money leaks? When you are very aware of the patterns which you are following in spending money, you become really aware of times and places that you are overspending. When you look at a pattern over a period of, I'm gonna say two to three months at least, it allows you to really pick out those places where you're like, well, that went way up. What in the world was I doing? Once you see those patterns, it becomes really easy to figure out where those money leaks exist. Another great way to do this is to look at receipts. Mm -hmm. One thing you might think about doing is keeping a month's worth of receipts mm -hmm. in a box so that you can go back and look at each one and analyze exactly what you've spent at each store. This will show up some areas where you might have some leaks that need to be attended to. You know what's interesting to me? I think in this digital age, we don't tend to look at physical receipts. Mm -mm. We tend to go online and we look at the bottom line, yeah. what, how much did I spend? But when mm -hmm. it really comes down to figuring out and knowing exactly what you spent that money on, sometimes most of us can't do that reliably, especially from memory. A, a great example of this is years ago, I started analyzing our grocery receipts. I categorized those expenses to figure out, and remember this was many, many, many years ago, mm -hmm. I figured out how much I was spending of our grocery budget, what percentage was being spent on meat, what percentage on dairy, what percentage on canned foods, things that were gonna go in our pantry, and what percentage was being spent on fresh food, uh, for instance, uh, produce. Once I was able to see that, it made me really aware that we were spending the vast majority of our grocery budget in the meat department. Mm -hmm. And even before we became plant-based, that was when we started cutting back on how much meat that we were consuming because for us at that point, it was dealing with our finances rather than dealing with our health. So we'd actually started that process long before we ever became plant-based. But it was because I realized 50%, 50% guys, yeah. of our monthly grocery budget was spent in that meat department. Had I not categorized those expenses, I never would have known what that percentage was. Look for possible impulse purchases. And this can have to mm -hmm. do with spaving. Now, we just talked mm -hmm. about this yes. last week in depth of what spaving is. Remember, spaving is spending in order to save. That's when you get 50% off if you buy two or something like that. A store or a business offers you some special if you buy more. Ads can get you into spending money that you don't have. Or even just seeing things on the shelf as you pass by them. Maybe you're shopping while you're hungry and something just looks tempting and good to you. If it's not on your list, you probably shouldn't buy it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a word, which has become one of our favorite new words, spaving, <laughs> uh, and you're like, what in the world is this whole thing all about? I'm going to make sure the spaving video, guys, is linked up above. And I'll also put a link to it in the description of this video for you. Another thing you can do, and Hope and I have mentioned this several times, we have done this, we've been doing this mm -hmm. for a couple decades now, mm -hmm. and that's implement the 10% challenge. This is a very helpful tool that Hope and I implemented into our budget years ago in order to reduce mm -hmm. an area or areas by a total amount of 10%. Listen, if you have not done the 10% challenge, I cannot tell you clearly enough how helpful this was for us when we looked at our own budget and said, 
it's cut down as far as it can be cut down. There's no more give in it. It's a tight budget. <laughs> and we did the 10% challenge and found money. The 10% challenge in short is where you write down all of your budget categories, the average of what you're spending in each of those categories uh, every single month, and then you are going to plan for 20 minutes. You're going to brainstorm ways that you can cut down your budget categories, each of them by 10%. It really helps to have two people yep. involved in this because Hope will think of things that I won't think of and I'll think of things that she won't think of. So we put our heads together mm -hmm. and we come up with a pretty good plan. Now, I just want to give you a couple of examples of some things that we've implemented here mm -hmm. with that 10% challenge. I use a lot less laundry detergent mm -hmm. and with using less laundry detergent, we're saving on purchasing that item. The same is true for dishwashing mm -hmm. soap. I I use a lot less of that now for each batch that we do, and that's saving a lot of money. So there's all kinds of things you can do to save money in little areas that maybe you haven't thought about. I want to know in the comment section, have you done our 10% challenge? And if you've done the challenge, tell us how it's helped you. Drop that in the comment section for me, will you? And if you are looking for ways to cut your expenses, the very first time we really implemented the 10% challenge was when we decided we were gonna get really, really serious. We were going to save money to pay cash for the house in which we currently live. And that was the first time we went through and we yeah. did the 10% challenge and cut down our own budget. Well, along with that, we made a handy list of all the ways that we were cutting back our budget. There were 10 main ways that we were radically reducing our expenses. I put it all into an ebook for you along with step-by-step -step instructions and there's checklists in there. It's free, guys. It's our guide to saving on expenses. I'll make sure there's a link to it in the description of the video for you. Another strategy you can put in place here is to audit your memberships and your subscriptions. It's very important to know, are you using all of these? Are you getting the good out of the money that you're putting into them? If you're not, then you can consider that a leak. In fact, Hope just discovered a, a membership that she belonged to <laughs> that she's ready to quit now as a part of saving some money. I'll let her talk about that. I did. You guys know <laughs> that a few months back, I did the 30-day free for Amazon Prime. A few months back. It did was, you catch that? It was. But look, <laughs> we have used it several times, to be honest. And we're not totally against Amazon Prime or no, Netflix no, no. or Disney Plus or any of those. And no. we've talked about that before in videos where if you really want to have those, just rotate through them. Every three months, rotate to a new service. Well, yeah. we had had it, I think, longer than three months. <laughs> Quite a bit and longer. And Larry finally said, what exactly are we paying for that? Because I was enjoying it. I am not going to lie. <laughs> and I said, you know, I feel like it's time. So I just went on there and I pushed the button that said, delete the account. So even, even we find those areas where I'm like, oh, it's definitely a money leak. Another strategy that you can implement is to seek out and hunt down hidden charges that banks like to put in, credit cards like to put in. Anything that you're buying online might have a hidden fee stuck in there somewhere. Take a look for those and make sure that there might be a way to get around those. Utility bills insurance bills, yeah. any bill that you are paying monthly, credit, cards. credit card bills. Yeah. Listen, if you are paying your insurance bill every month, you are probably seeing on there an additional charge. Yep. It's a convenience fee yeah. because you're paying it every month. If you call them and say, can I get that convenience fee taken off if I pay once every six months or once a year? See what the shortest length of time is that you can pay it and then still get that convenience fee taken off. Sometimes they'll do it at every six months and sometimes it's once a year. Yeah. But do what you can to avoid paying those little fees because it can be five to seven to eight dollars a month. And over the course of a year, that adds up. Another thing to look at is to negotiate lower bills. This is especially true for smaller companies. Mm -hmm. They want your business. They don't want to lose you because you're going to go to someone else who might charge them less. So look for a way with them that they can lower your bill by maybe doing some comparison shopping. Go back to them with the amounts that you found that you could save with somebody else and they might be very willing to lower your bill. This harkens back to the very first thing we mentioned in this video, 
when we told you that you needed to be sort of tracking your expenses over time, mm -hmm. what happens when you have a subscription? Let's just say cable TV, for instance. About 24 months ago, I researched the average cable bill. It was $75 a month. Mm. Do you know what it is now? Mm. It's $100 a month. Wow. All of these expenses are slowly yeah. creeping up. And if you have it automated, if you have it set to automatically pay every single month, mm -hmm. chances are if they are raising those fees, they will tell you about it. They'll send you an email. You'll be like, yeah, whatever. And <laughs> and then you'll realize all of a sudden you're paying a few dollars more than you were a few months ago. You always have to determine, is this still worth it to me? Yeah. Are you still using it? Are you still getting the good out of it? Are you willing to pay $100 a month for that cable bill instead of 75? There's got to be mm. like a, a line in the sand, guys. I think especially with budgeting where you say, I'm not going beyond that. Beyond this amount, it's just not worth it to me. But you have to determine that and be strong in that and call them and say, I, you know, this has been inching up. Is there a way I can get a cheaper plan? If, you know, and a lot of times they'll go and they'll say, well, we have a special deal and they'll give you that special deal so that they keep you as a customer. But always be aware of exactly what's going on with those monthly bills. That's all right, guys. You can negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. <laughs> yes. We did a whole video on this topic where we walked you step by step how to get lower prices, not only on your bills that occur every month that are the same amount every month, but those that are also vary from month to month. Yep. If you want that step by step tutorial, that video is right over there. Go take a look.